Moving on to the next step for finding the weighted average cost of capital, step two of the process is we have to find the cost of equity. And to find the cost of equity in this section, you're gonna be using one of two methods. You're gonna use the dividend discount model, or you're gonna be using the capital asset pricing model. Now, I'm gonna do a very brief review of both of these in this video. However, if you want a more in-depth review, I would highly recommend you go back to the stocks chapter. That's where we talk about the dividend discount model and also go back to the return versus risk chapter. It's where we talk about the capital asset pricing model if you want a more thorough review of these concepts. So the first method, the dividend discount model, if you remember to the stocks chapter, basically the price of the stock is equal to the present value of all of the dividends. And the way that the dividend discount model relates to the cost of equity is basically these dividends, the rate that we are discounting them by to time zero to get that price of the stock, we are discounting them by the cost of equity or the return on equity. So there are different scenarios that you can run into. If you remember, there's non-constant growth, constant growth. But the scenario that you're going to be running into mostly in this section is the constant growth scenario. So if you remember, the price of a stock in time zero, if dividends are growing constantly in the future at a constant rate, is just basically a growing perpetuity. So P0, the price at time zero, is going to be equal to the dividend in the first period over R minus G where R is the return on equity and G is the growth rate. Well, the cost of equity or the return on equity is this R value here. So this is what we are going to be solving for. So if you actually rearrange this equation, so if you put this P0 over one, cross multiply, and then you isolate for the R, you would end up getting RE, let's just put RE here, so the cost of equity as we labeled it over there, is gonna be equal to the dividend in the first year over the price in time zero plus that growth rate. So this is the equation you're gonna be using mostly and this section to find that cost of equity using the dividend discount model. So let's do an example to illustrate the dividend discount model. So let's say a company just paid a dividend of $3 and dividends are expected to grow at 3% indefinitely. If the current stock price is $73.57, what is the cost of equity? Well, if you notice in this question, we are dealing with a stock that's paying a constant growth dividend forever, indefinitely. And as we mentioned, the return on equity for a constant growth dividend stock is equal to the dividend in one year over the price today plus the growth rate. But notice in this question how they gave us the dividend that was just paid. So if we show this in a timeline, they gave us the dividend in time zero. It was just paid, so this dividend was $3. However, if you remember, the price of a stock is equal to the present value of all the future dividends. So we need the dividend in year one. So this is what we're looking for. We need this D1 here. Well, since we're given D0 and we know that dividends are growing at 3% indefinitely, then we know D1 is just going to be that dividend in D0 of $3 times 1.03. 1, one plus that growth rate in decimals. So when we do that calculation, we would end up getting 3.09, $3.09. So that's going to be the dividend in year one. And we can now use that dividend to find the return on equity. So the return on equity or the cost of equity, both mean the same thing, is going to be the dividend in that first period of $3.09 over the stock price today, which is given $73.57, plus that growth rate of 3%, and that growth rate is in decimal, so it's 0 0.03. And when you do this calculation in your calculator, you would end up getting 0 0.072 or 7.2%.
So that there is your cost of equity and we found it using the dividend discount model. So this is an example of a question where when they ask you for the cost of equity, you're going to have to use that dividend discount model. You're going to have to use that equation there. Now let's talk about the second method that you'll be using in this section to calculate the cost of equity. And the second method is the capital asset pricing model. So to do a little review, I wrote out the equation for the capital asset pricing models. Basically, the return on equity or the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of the stock times the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. And if you remember, this whole bracket here, it's called the market risk premium. So you got to be careful with what you are given in the question. Sometimes the question will give you the return on the market. So you'll have to plug in that value for this RM here, and you'd have to find the value of that whole bracket yourself. So you would take that return on the market and subtract the risk-free rate. And sometimes they'll give you the actual market risk premium. So they'll give you the value of that whole bracket right away. So then you just multiply it by the beta and add the risk-free rate to get that return on equity. So just be aware of what you're given in the question. So let's illustrate this through an example. Let's say a company stock has a beta of 1.2. If the risk-free rate is 4% and the market risk premium is 10%, what is the cost of equity? Well, first off, just by reading this question, it's obvious that we're going to have to use the capital asset pricing model. We can't use the dividend discount model because there's no information given about the dividends. So we know return on equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta times the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Well, the risk-free rate is given as 4%. The beta of the stock is given as 1.2. And then notice how we are given the market risk premium and it's 10%. So that means that the value of that whole bracket there is 10%. It wouldn't be the return on the market. It would be the value of that whole bracket. So we would put in 10 for the bracket there. So when we do that calculation, 4 plus 1.2 times 10, you would end up getting 16% for that cost or return on equity. Now, let's switch it up a bit. Let's say that uh, instead of this being the market risk premium, let's say they say the return on the market is 10%. Well, if the return on the market is 10%, well, now the way the capital asset pricing model is gonna look is the risk-free rate still gonna be four, we're still going to have that 1.2 beta in front of the bracket, but now we're going to have the return on the market being 10%, not the market risk premium. So we have to take that return on the market and subtract that risk-free rate of 4%. Okay, so it's a little bit different now. So we have to calculate that market risk premium ourselves. 10 minus 4 is 6%. 6% times 1.2, that gives us 7.2%, and then 7.2% plus that 4 gives us 11.2%. So our return on equity would be lower. It would be 11.2% instead of 16%. So again, just be aware with what they are giving you in the question. If they're giving you the return on the market, do it this way. If they're giving you the market risk premium, you do it this way. And that's pretty much it for step two for finding the cost of equity. So two methods you could use, either the dividend discount model or the capital asset pricing model. And you want to look in the questions what kind of information they are giving you. If they're giving you information about the dividends of a company and how much they're going to grow by, and they're giving you the price of the stock, you know you're probably going to have to use the dividend discount model to find that cost of equity. However, if you see information about the beta of the stock and the market risk premium and then the risk-free rate, you're probably going to have to use the capital asset pricing model to find the cost of equity. And I think there's actually a couple of questions where you're going to have to use both methods. So you would find two different cost of equities and then you can average them out to get an overall cost of equity for the company. But just be aware of what kind of information they are giving you in the question to know whether you're using the dividend discount model 
or the capital asset pricing model. Usually you're only gonna have to use one of the two. So let's do a little review of the steps that we've covered so far in finding that weighted average cost of capital. So, so far we found what the cost of debt is gonna be. We know that's just gonna be the yield to maturity on the bonds that are issued by the company. And then we also just found the cost of equity. And we found that with one of two methods, dividend discount model or the capital asset pricing model. And so far, we've only been talking about debt and equity as forms of capital that we can take in order to buy assets and start a company. Well, there's actually a third form of capital that's going to be mentioned in this section, and we can take on preferred equity or preferred stock. So that is another source of capital that we can take on. And obviously, we're going to have to pay some kind of return to those preferred shareholders. So let's call that return the cost of preferred equity. And preferred equity takes on some unique characteristics. It's actually the easiest one to deal with of the three forms of capital. So we'll talk about preferred equity and how to find that cost of preferred equity in the next video. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.